Welcome back to Miller's in Motion. If it's your first time here, my name is Ryan. I'm Lauren. And together we live full time in a fifth wheel. We actually just got kind of switching out to the mm -hmm. very beautiful toy hauler sitting behind us. And you've mm -hmm. gotten to see what it looks like from the factory, mm -hmm. but that was like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We're in Texas. We've moved into it for the most part. <laughs> Starting to make it our own. And we finally have our thumbprint on it. And we want to show you how we're living mm -hmm. in this brand new 2024 Alliance Valor 44 V14. Okay, before we dive into it, there's a few things we really want you to know. One, this has our thumbprint on it. So we've already made some pretty significant changes to the interior of the coach. If you want to see what this RV looks like straight out of the factory, check out this video wherever we put it on the screen, because that's going to show you what it looks like when it comes to you. We've been living in this for three weeks. We've made some pretty significant changes as you're about to see on the inside. Also, if you're only concerned about the inside or only concerned about the outside or there's certain aspects of the RV you really want to see, we're going to put all those chapters down below. So feel free to skip around and watch the portions that you want to first. We're going to go into a reasonable amount of detail in this video. So if it's a little longer, we understand why you might want to skip around. Starting off, we are going to do the exterior of the 44 V14. Obviously, as you can tell by looking at it, there is a brand new decal scheme and, and graphics package from Alliance this year. This applies to all the Valors. I personally like it a whole lot. Lauren he likes it too. She's nodding. You're on a gimbal. You can't tell. Um, also, you can see the three lights are down below instead of the one bar. thing I really like about that is it's behind that uh, plastic, and so it's nice and sealed. And so sometimes lights on the exterior, as they heat up in the summer, get a little tacky and weird. That can't happen. So one of the very first things we did is we actually flipped out the Kurt Rotoflex for the Moride rubber pin box. We had a lot of really good experience with this. The travel is a little bit different and it kind of goes hand in hand with our new suspension system, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But we're going to talk about the non-fun side. I'm sorry, but it's also some of the biggest questions we've gotten since we've started full time in our being. So we're going to start on the service side. All right. So starting down the service side, we have our bedroom exterior slide. One of the big changes they made, they actually went to the cable driven system. It's too many problems with Schwinn tech. So they went back to the cable for this size slide and everything should be perfectly fine. Behind this door right here is our auto leveler. Uh, it is a hydraulic system here. Behind this door is our propane and as well as our propane quick connect. Uh, there is another tank on the other side. We're gonna breeze past that because it's not all that much fun. So this storage unit though, something brand new for 2024 across all Valors is they went to a manifold system. I personally like this a lot. I saw some people kind of bashing it a little bit online because they said, oh, look at all that PEX, there's all those potential for leaks. But here's the thing. Previously, they had shutoff valves just at each individual thing. So underneath your sink, at your washer dryer connection, wherever. Here, they're all right here. So what that allows us to do is actually turn things off that we're not using. For instance, we don't use the exterior hot water feature on our spray ports. In addition to that, leaving it on could actually burn out something uh, in your control board on your hot water heater. So we just turn it off. There's no reason to even have that line pressurized. Also, we opted for a washer and dryer, but we put it in one of the two positions. So the forward position we chose not to use, we just turn those water lines off. There's no actual water in them. So I can't get a leak where there's not something in use. So that's why I really truly like it. So we do use this little device here. It's a flow meter. It kind of tells me how much water has gone into the tank. So when we're doing like a, uh, a fresh tank fill, those types of things. So I can take it as far as I want to and cut it off when I know I'm at the gallons I want. Also, we use this area for storage, so we just kind of modulated all this. This bin's kind of our accessories. This is extra sewer stuff that we don't use all that much, but it's the things that we can't fit, fit in the underneath where the tubes go. Um, this is fresh water. We always carry a couple of those hoses. And then I always have a utility hose that's not for drinking water. It's for like washing things down, spraying stuff off. That lives right here too. 12 gallon DSI hot water heater. We went back and forth on whether we wanted to actually do a tankless hot water heater. We actually like the idea of this. Yes, you have 12 gallons, but you also have the ability to use propane. So when we go boondocking anywhere, 
like RV Unplugged, we can still have hot water without having to use electricity. Furnace, pretty standard. So this is kind of a cool feature. This door is actually to the drop through trash can, which is in the kitchen. And Lauren will show you in a little bit. For me, uh, we actually don't use it for the trash can. We didn't love the idea of that. We like to have it in our other can. And so we use this for some of our electronic storage, we put the cord, uh, the power cord, that kind of stuff. So that's been great. Behind this door is actually our uh, fuel station. And then we have our tank fill. So this has two 30 gallon tanks on board. The forward one is specifically for our generator, which I just realized I didn't show you. And the rear one is got a fuel handle in here. So you can transfer from the front tank to the back tank utilizing this handle. Uh, we know something about that because we lost power. We don't have our solar system installed yet. And so we lost power and we had to run that bad boy for about 24 hours the other day. Last but not least, as we avoid some of this AC drip coming off. So this is kind of unique. So this is our flagpole buddy that has our Starlink on the top of it. I was struggling because if you notice on this coach, there's no ladder as, you, as we walk down. There is, but it's a different kind of a system we'll talk about in a second. So I kind of went to flagpole buddy and said, hey, I've got all this stuff. I don't really know what to do. And they actually suggested these suction gun mounts that they have. So they're actually called tile suckers. They're supposed to hold something like 50 pounds or 75, something ridiculous. And so that's kind of cool because now we can place it wherever we want. So let's say uh, we don't have coverage in the rear of the coach. I can just take it up front and put it on one of the slide boxes. I can put it on the front of the coach. So now I can move the mount and still get it high, but around. So I absolutely love that. We've had it up there for about two, three weeks now, and it's worked perfectly. So we're going to touch more on the patio once we get inside, but we do have the zero G patio door that just makes setting up the patio or the ramp so much easier to where Lauren could literally do it with a little pinky coming down. Um, but it has, we've actually loved having it. Well, she's been a little hot, so we haven't gotten to use it. Today's actually the first day we've had it down in patio mode. So behind door number seven, this is actually an onboard 12 volt air compressor, which is great because once you get your hose attachment, you can fill your tires of your truck or the coach itself. So you have that built in. As we move down the coach, we have our rear entry door. And the first thing you're gonna notice about the rear entry door is that it's black. So it's actually glass. Um, so it's a new look for them aesthetically. I really like it. Uh, it's easier to clean because you just spray Windex on it and that's it, you don't have to wash it like the rest of the coach. And the thing I'm leaning on, so this is another one of those upgrades we did. This is the safety rail from Moride. We do also have a discount code on a lot of this Moride stuff we're talking about today. So if you wanna save 7% plus get some free shipping, make sure to check out the link below in the description. But we absolutely love having this. One of the questions I got was, is it super stable? It's a little wobbly down here, but as you can see, I'm not a small person and I'm leaning pretty hard on that right now and it's not going anywhere. So hopefully that answers whoever asked that question. Coming down the coach, we have a little bit of power right here for, I'm not sure what, I guess the grill. External speakers, cool thing about the speakers is they're also 12 volt, but they're also JBL. These are the first speakers, interior and exterior, that haven't just completely sucked. There's a lot that's still better, but those are much, much better. And then our main entry door still have another safety rail here. So that's nice and handy. And then we also flipped out the stairs that came with it for the Moride step above. I like how they're hydraulic all the way up and down. Just makes everything a little easier and a little safer. Plus it has a smaller footprint on the inside with the arms and everything else that control it. Do have a spray port on the side and then behind door number 87. So this is just storage, nothing fancy. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten to play with this just a whole lot right now. There's a fan, uh, our Starlink box, and some random things that I still haven't installed yet. So this has become a catch-all a little bit for us, but eventually, as we kind of dial everything in, this is gonna get cleaned up quite a bit. That other propane tank, real quick, let's show you under here. So behind door number 483, this is the new NPS 5500 inverted generator so this saved our butt <laughs> the last couple of days when we ran without power um, really liked that there's also a remote switch inside that we will show you interior one of the cool things about this that i really like is that there is actually a pull handle so if you ever do have completely dead batteries for any reason you can actually flip a few levers and use the pull handle to start that up and then above just blank space behind that black box right there is the a uh, hydraulic um, system for the leveler and then our solar controller we're going to call this todd's play area for now because this is probably where some of the solar equipment's going to go and then behind this door is where 
the one battery is. Plus that little silver box down there is the D-Max. That is actually our brake control actuator for our brand new disc brakes. In addition to the disc brakes, we also upgraded to the Moride IS or independent suspension, the 8K version. Um, for us, it was about making something a little bit more towable and just saving the frame. The amount of vibration that transfers from the road to the coach is insane. The IS dampens most of that. And to be honest, I've towed a couple, I've towed about 1,500 miles with it now. Ugh, night and day difference. I probably won't ever not have it again. If you're interested in getting a suspension upgrade, whether it's the CRE 3000, the Alltrek 4000, or going all the way into the independent suspension, if you book that appointment, let them know that Miller's in Motion sent you over. They'll give you an extra $100 worth of stuff to spend on whatever you want, whether it's safety rail, stairs, that kind of stuff, when you're at your appointment. All right, so that's going to do it for the exterior of the coach. If you have any questions about anything on the outside, make sure to leave them below. So I'm going to officially hand it off to Lauren, mm -hmm. and uh, let's head inside. Welcome to our new home. Let's start up in the front cap, the bedroom. All right, so you'll see this setup is actually very similar to our old RV, which was kind of important to us. We were very comfortable in that. We brought our big upgraded mattress from the other one. This is an RV king size mattress. The closet actually got a little bit of an upgrade because the washer dryer is no longer in here, which means I got more room for my shoes. And of course, yes, there's still storage underneath the mattress. To give you an idea on how this is set up, let's start over here. And the sides are pretty identical. So a shelf up here, hanging clothes, and then there's two drawers down here as well. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. And then in the main area of the closet, as you can see, we have plenty of hanging storage and with everything up high like this, we can also still have some baskets and storage down below as well. So that left us plenty of room. All right, and then as you know, the world's worst kept secret, the hidden storage that's not so hidden in every RV here in the top of the dresser. And then these three drawers of storage, they're a little shallow, but they're pretty wide and pretty deep. And they're, they close with that magnetic latch, which is actually really strong. All right, and instead of a fourth drawer, there is room for shoe storage down here on the floor, which as you can see, works out again, magically for me and my shoes. So as you can see, we didn't make a whole lot of changes in the bedroom area, but we did have to make quite a few changes in here. This bathroom space is significantly smaller than our previous RV, but it just functions different. So we just kind of had to find our place in here. We hung our face towels over here. Good old command strips to the rescue always. Um, down here, my sunrise alarm clock that Ryan despises, but that's okay. And then of course a dehumidifier because we're all about prevention in here. All right, this cabinet. This is a lot more space than we really thought it would be. Um, we've organized most of our stuff pretty well using some of these cheap uh, plastic tubs. And then towels go up there and there's actually more towel storage back behind there. Those are for our lesser used towels, our beach towels, all that sort of stuff. So coming down here, this is another place we had to get a little creative with our storage, um, but that's easy. We ordered this off of Amazon and just kind of organized everything around it. So we still have all the stuff that we need um, just separated out into some tiered drawers down there. And if you saw it from the last rig, our good old stick up toilet paper holder, because you can put that wherever it so suits you. You may notice that we are missing shower doors. That was by intention. We actually really prefer the shower curtain over the doors. And so we left that off from the get go per our request. All right, stepping into the shower. For reference, I'm about five foot seven. I have plenty of room up here. Uh, these we got because this skylight let in a lot of heat and a lot of light sometimes when you didn't really want it. So those have been a lifesaver again off of Amazon. Um, he got some of these storage cubbies over here that just make things uh, a lot easier, especially on travel days. He accidentally left all of this in here on one travel day and it didn't move. So those things are strong. I do miss my teak seat a little bit, even though we have a bench, something we went back and forth on. I get it. But if you redesign this in the future alliance, can I have my teak seat back, please? We do plan to swap out the shower head for one that like an oxygenics or something with a different flow, um, better for boondocking and things like that and better pressure. This one uses quite a bit of water in a very short time as we found out. So 
overall, we've really made it our own, made a lot of modifications, um, and we've learned how to use the space best. All right, one thing you may have noticed is there's not much room for storage of bath towels. After you use them, you need to hang them up to dry. We went back and forth on hanging them in the shower or not, but we elected to do this instead. A simple towel hook over the door because we do have a gap above the door, which allows us plenty of room to do that and not scratch anything. So this was very easy, very convenient, and stays out of the way. All right, one of the biggest appeals for this floor plan for us was the kitchen. It's not often that you find such a large functional kitchen in a toy hauler that's also open to the living space. So this was a really big selling point for us. Down here at the bottom, we've kind of turned this into cleaning and storage, just like we did in the last one, keeps everything nice and handy. We also put some really heavy items like the cast iron things that we insist on traveling with, but no regrets, we love our cast iron. Coming up, we have this huge single basin sink again and our little dish drying rack that has gone from one end of the United States to the other with us because we love it. Coming up this way, this cabinet is huge and we still don't really know what to do with it. So it's been a little bit of a catch all. So we'll organize it one day and then we'll put all the Amazon links and tell you what we did, but we're working on it. All right, coming around here up top, we have a lot more storage. As you can see, we've managed to fit appliances up here, some really large pieces uh, that we use often and wanted within grabbing distance where we didn't have to get the step stool out. We didn't have to get the step stool out. She means her. I can reach everything fine. I'm five foot seven. When stuff is up there, that's tall. There also, are people much shorter than me. Also, she's saying get the step stool. The first response is always, hey, Ryan. It's true. That's what he's here for. All right, and then coming back through here, we have a large microwave and a four burner cooktop, just like we had in our other one. We really appreciate this, and we love that it's gas powered and not induction. All right, and below that, we have the large gray stone oven. This is very similar to what we had before. Very large, we've used it several times, and we can cook just about anything we want in there, big pizzas, turkeys, etc. So moving on around here, we have a more storage. Lots of storage up here. Again, the step stool things are up above. Don't look at the cutting board up there. Hey, it didn't <laughs> fall today. It didn't fall today. We're working on securing it. It's a perfect spot for it. Also real quick in that hole is nothing because she can't reach it. I can't reach it. I could, well, even with the steps, so I can't reach to the very back. It's just going to be like an abyss if we do that. But anyway, so a little bit more storage. And we found that this basket stores our cups really nicely so they don't go rumbling around when we go down the road. And as you can see, we have several kind of largest things that we left on the counter. This utensil organizer, the air fryer, and some other things. These we held down with the museum putty. And per our test drive today, it worked really well. So those actually get to stay out whenever we travel. Like I said, the air fryer and then coming around over here, we bought this kind of versatile knife block where you can just kind of put them in wherever you see fit. Since we didn't really have a knife set, we've collected as we go. And then another dehumidifier because that's who we are. Also, she talked about how these things didn't move on our test drive. That was also a big reason why we wanted the independent suspension mm -hmm. as well, because the right. decreased vibration that you get from a normal traditional leaf spring suspension right allowed us to do that. The museum putty just ensures it doesn't go anywhere. And I can tell you I went down a road that I probably shouldn't have. And it was shaky, shaky, and everything was perfectly where it was. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, and then before we wrap up in the kitchen, as you can see, we have a little bit more storage down here. We have some good sized drawers held with those magnets again that work really well. These are really like deep. Um, we're not really sure how to use some of that space, so that's something we're still kind of working on. Uh, there's a lot of room. We're just still working out the logistics there, but it's nice to have the space. One of the ways we found to do that is these drawer dividers in here. This helps separate our plasticware. We don't like to do dishes, so yep, we have lots of plasticware. You saw the fine china up in here as well. So these they're expandable and totally adjustable and they have little rubber edges on the end to, to grip and they haven't moved a bit, but I guess when you're working with plasticware, that's not a lot of stress on them either, but hey, it works. 
So real quick, I'm going to take over just because there's a little bit of a technical portion here. So behind this drawer, you actually have the continuation of the cabinets from above. But right here is also our control panel. So there's no one touch or anything like in our previous coach, which is okay because I never used it. So right here we have our Renogy solar controller. This is going to get flipped out. More than likely, that's right where I'm going to put the Victron GX touch, which is that little touch screen with all the little racy guys around it that tells you what's going on. Here is our main light switch. There is a dimmer on it, which is awesome. And then here you have all your tank level controls, your hot water heater, your water pump, your tank heaters, a bunch of random kind of kitchen lights, that kind of stuff. And then all of our slide controls and our two main awnings. Also, as a little thing too, behind this cabinet here, there's actually, this is where our breakers and everything are. And if you open this up, you can see where they, everything is. Everything's labeled nicely. And Alliance actually does a really cool thing where all the wiring is colored and they give you the chart right there. Surprisingly, one of the most difficult things to find was a trash can that fit in this space, but we did find this and it actually flips up to the side. We really appreciated that and it stays out of the way and keeps this area nice and open for when the dogs, you know, run through. Now then, back to over here. I'm excited about this, not because I like it. I mean, I appreciate having a pantry, but this is going to be Lauren's first project. Ta-da! So these shelves are adjustable, which is really nice, and we've made a lot of great use out of the space. Just a little tension rod here on that lower shelf whenever we travel, and things didn't move. That worked really well. But these drawers down here, they are small. Let me show you what I mean. It's a water filter for the Brita. But anyways, that's not a lot of space, and there's a lot of wasted space on either side. Um, and so we think that we can do something a little bit better with that, and it involves Lauren and a hammer. So we're happy about that. I don't know about happy. We're oh, I am. We're we're happy with what could come from it. The Lauren and a hammer thing's a little terrifying. It's been a long time since I had a good project. Okay, and then down here on the bottom, we've also placed some of our other heavy items, like more cast iron. All right, and then we have more storage. I tell you, there's storage everywhere. We really appreciate how they've used this, but. It's hard to reach up there without my handy dandy step stool, but I will get it out for that. Or husband. Or husband, yes. Um, and again, we haven't even really needed this space a whole lot, but we do plan to use it for some of like paper towel storage and whatnot, extra spices and stuff. So there we go. Moving on to the fridge. I'll be honest, we haven't changed a whole lot here, but we do really appreciate it. It is a 12 volt fridge, obviously the French door with the freezer on the bottom. The thing about this one, unlike our last rig, is that both doors open and you can move the shelves. That's amazing. So we're really happy about that and it functions exactly how we'd hoped it would. All right, coming over here, this is something that was a little bit of a point of contention between us because I really wanted a dining table and he really didn't care as much about that. So this was really important to me. I love that it's right here in front of the big window and the only upgrade we've made, I guess you could say is my plant but I like a little greenery in here. We took away, it comes with two extra chairs. We did kind of take those away because there's only two of us. We don't really need all four chairs. And then over here, the very important thing, coffee bar. All right, we brought our Keurig. Yes, we're Keurig people, no hate there, please. And then I got this mat so that we keep the counters nice and clean. And it also helps keep this from moving much. We secured the mat to the counter and the Keurig to the mat. So this can travel down the road. We just take the water out of it. So, all right. And then up here, all of the accessories for coffee time. So cups, if, coffee. If, if you haven't tried the Taste of San Antonio or Texas Pecan from HEB. Yes. And next time you roll through Texas HEB, that coffee is amazing. Absolutely. And we'd be coffee pot mm -hmm. people if we could agree on a coffee, but we can't. But so. we can't. So it is what it is. That's what marriage is about. Compromise, right? Yeah, that's what they care for. Marriage neighbors. <laughs> And then down here, more storage, my, my stash of Red Bulls because coffee is not enough. Mishka is telling you that's where her treats are stored. Um, and then my uh, medical supplies for whenever I get really sick because I have a breathing disorder. All right, moving on this way a little bit with my handy dandy helper, Mishka. We did upgrade our TV. If you notice, that looks a little bit different. We had this one in the old coach. Ryan has a thing for TVs, very particular on this. Also, so, hi, Joe. Um, this was his handiwork. I don't care. There's a TV here. I'm happy. And he also upgraded the sound bar, which we have kind of tucked away back there where you can't really see it. So 
more stuff that's held down with Museum Putty, which again, worked really well. All right, and then last but not least, can you tell this is like Ryan's section? This is his TV and his sound bar, and this is all of his tech equipment and camera gear and stuff up here. So we got a few pouches and things to keep those organized and they travel well up there as well. All right, coming over here, you may notice some of the biggest change in this area. This floor plan comes with an L-shaped couch. The L will kick out over there and kind of block that side. One of the first things that we did was we swapped that out for just the single side sofa that fits here in the slide box. The reason that we did that was basically for these heathens right here and exactly what they're doing, they take up all of this space and it just gives them more room. So that was something that was important to us. We saw a lot of value in doing that quickly. In doing that, this couch, as you can see, doesn't quite go to the ends of the side of the slide box. So we got these little tables here off of Amazon and they have power stuck in the in the ends here so they do connect and you have plenty of that plus obviously a table for setting things on and there's storage down below and then more cup holders stuck inside of the couch yes so this has been a game changer for us and we couldn't be happier but please know this is not how the rig goes all right and then over here we have their little dog bed they lay on this all day every day we thought it would actually be really cool at some point to maybe put a flip up countertop here and have extra bar seating, but I feel like that's pretty far down the road because it's just the two of us and we do have the table. Before we move on, I wanted to show you some of the storage up here. I don't have my step stool, so we'll have to go with next best, <gasps> which is, this is how I get to it every day, all day. All right. So we have turned this into basically office space. So we have stuff for the ring system or stuff for our office use, you know, extra supplies, things like that. And we use these wicker baskets or these soft fabric bins that we got, I'm sure at Target or something of the sort. And they are strewn from one end to the other. And that has worked really well for us. One of the big changes too that they did is they used to kick out that last cabinet oh, yeah. on the far side. Yeah, and it was angled like that, right? You couldn't open to the cabinets mm -hmm. next to the same time. So that's gone and it's just a straight line now too. Some of these actually stay empty. So she was talking about our ring security system, right. which we'll talk about when we get the toy hauler space. But so it stays empty most of the time. But when we take our cameras down from outside, mm -hmm. that's where they go for when we're in travel days. Right. We always try to make sure everything we put up has a place to go when we travel, if it needs to be taken down and can't be secured with museum. But... All right. Moving on to the most important part toy hauler space. I'm going to shut this because they will join us if we don't. Oh, sad face dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the toy hauler space, we have been so excited about this space. Of course, one of the first things we did, we told you we had this in our old rig. And yes, this was a priority to get a washer dryer combo unit into this one quickly as well. This one is different. We did go with the GE version instead of the Splendid. This is also ventless. We get a lot of questions about this. One, we love it. We're so happy to have this. We wouldn't have it any other way. Ventless, does it take longer to dry? Yep, it does. Does it matter? Nope, because I'm not at the laundromat. We set a load, you run it, and when you come home, it's done. So if you know what to expect, and that's like where your expectation is, is that, yeah, it takes a little while, it's great. So I do a lot of the laundry because I work from here all day. So it's easy for me to keep an eye on it, mainly because yeah. my desk is right here. Um, just as a frame of reference, the wash cycle is almost exactly the same on delicate, cold, how we do it with low spin. It takes about 40, 45 minutes for a normal size load. Um, the drying process, if we do an extra dry, which is what I've been doing, mm -hmm. it can take up to about two and a half to three and a half hours because it's a center dry. It just depends on how much clothes is in there. So. All in all, it takes about 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour longer than our Splendid that was vented. One other quick little thing that I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but I have, is our clothes seem to be a little cleaner mm -hmm. and they also seem to be a little softer. We have not done anything different. We're using the exact same um, laundry sheets, which is actually another little thing. We use laundry detergent sheets. Um, from True Earth instead of detergent because you don't want to put in the Splendid, you don't want to put liquid in there. They want you to use the dry and we don't like that. So we found these, you just put it right in the tub. It's great. Um, 
We also use a like um, Febreze unstoppable little smelly good scent thing in there as well. So all in all, we've been really, really happy with that. Um, it does take a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, we're talking 30 minutes to an hour. It's not that big of a deal. And yeah, we just like it. All right. And I don't know about you, but I would say I prefer this over my Splendid. So let the arguments and debates begin. I do as well. <laughs> All right, over here, this has kind of turned into our dog corner because it's by the door. That's going to make travel days pretty easy. We have their collars and leashes and bags because we're responsible humans. Also, everything you see on the walls, for the most part, we either used um, 3M uh, mm -hmm. stick-up tape or command strips. So. That's right. That's right. No nails. I don't think we've put many nails in. So. No, very little. Yeah, very much. All right. This is our little half bath for the non-paying guests, of course. We actually haven't done anything in here. As you'll see, there's a Swiffer, there's a vacuum, and there's spray because I don't know why, but we'll get to that eventually. All right, and from here, we are actually gonna pass it off to him so he can talk about what's in this cabinet up here. So this cabinet above me is actually become our technology slash where some of my office stuff sits that I actually use on my desk, which is behind us. So what is up there because you can't exactly see it and we're going to do a longer video over kind of the office setup also the installation of my desk but what's up there is our ring control center so our security system i put a battery backup slash surge protector up there as well and then we also have our pep wave max transit duo from the previous coach um, that is up there as well the only thing i didn't do is i didn't put the antenna on the roof uh, i learned I'm going to wait until we do solar. <laughs> and then if we need the antenna, I'll do it. We're also using Starlink a whole lot right now. Um, seems to be the best method for internet for us at the moment. And so if we continue that, I'm not actually going to spend a bunch of money on something I don't use all that often. So Lauren talked about the dog stuff. We're going to move a little bit over to here. So on the other side, you can tell we are now at the Happy Jack system. So above us, we do still have the bed. That has not changed. We intend on leaving it that way. Um, but you'll notice there's a big whiteboard with a couple of calendars on here and a new desk space. So the couches are officially gone. They do not exist anymore. And I put this desk on in place of it. Nice computer mounted mount. So all of the stuff that was up here was still used in the other rig. We did get an office chair for this. Um, also, my speaker that I use when I'm editing, that's clamped down. All the big things you see up here are actually command strip down. So when we're in transit, this folds down on top of a pillow and bungee to the desk and then goes up. Everything else stays minus the computer and the hard drives and the things that are plugged in. That all goes somewhere else, either in a bag or up top. Also, if you're ever curious what a content calendar looks like, that looks like that. <laughs> so this is just how we kind of stay organized um, because of the success of this channel, thanks to RV Unplugged and all of you that are watching. Uh, we've tried to get a little more organized because this is now my full-time job. So it has all the stuff that we're working on uh, from the website to maybe some merch we're coming out with and some blog post stuff we're doing. Plus it has all the content we're doing for the entire month. We just haven't done October quite yet and any random little things that I need to get done. So uh, trying to stay organized so that we stay on top of everything. So I am going to throw it back to Lauren. She's going to talk about the other side, plus that cool little thing off the back that was another big reason we were excited about. All right, real quickly, this has kind of turned into dog central. We've got, you know, like the dog food over here. We've got the dog water with a mat here. We got this down here because they are heathens and they drink like sieves. And so if we don't have that, there's just water everywhere. That was a really good idea. It's done a phenomenal job. We used to have their water outside because of that, because they would get it everywhere. We really didn't have anywhere to put it right. in the other RV. So now that we have the toy our space, obviously we wanted to go bring it in so have more access to it. Right. We have another dog bed out here because they are spoilt. Yes, you are correct, but they still use it. And then this was another Amazon find because we wanted something where I could sit down if he was working on something and we could work together. But we can also take this into the living space if we have extra guests and it doubles as a ton of storage. This, the interior of here, I think fits three of those big fabric bins, lots of storage in here. There you go. All right, and then as you see behind me, last but not least, let's head out to the patio. All right, and the weather is finally nice enough where we can enjoy this huge asset to the rig. We wanted this for ourselves, but also for the dogs, and we love it. This has been phenomenal. So obviously this is the other side of the zero G Moride ramp door, mm -hmm. uh, but 
this was a big appeal for me mm -hmm. for the toiler space because we like to sit out and have our cup of coffee in the morning, mm -hmm. especially as the weather starts to turn. And I will say, unfortunately, it is technically fall. Uh, <laughs> those are not orange because of fall. It's just because we haven't gotten any rain minus the other night. They're just dead. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Texas right as you're going into fall. That's just every year. Um, but we can sit out here in the evenings and just enjoy a drink or even flip around and watch TV for the inside, but be outside, let the dogs sit out here. Yeah. The one thing, they, we used to let them up on one of the couches. Mm -hmm. We had like a couch cover, if you remember, in the other rig. Right. That disappeared because we just have the one couch now for them. And so this enables Bailey especially to be able to come out here and lay when the weather's appropriate. Right. Um, we will put it back up for storms and those mm -hmm. types of things. But when the weather's nice, it's going to stay down and we're going to leave our chairs out here. That's right. And she loves it. All right. Well, that is our brand new home, our 2024 Alliance Valor 44 V14. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us on our tour, seeing how we made it our own. If you have any questions for us about this rig, how we're living in it, or how it comes from the factory, mm -hmm. really anything, feel free to leave that in the comments down below. Also, if you don't mind, go visit our website, mm -hmm. www.millersinmotion.com. Pretty simple. That's also linked down below. There's a lot of fun stuff going on over there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really cool and big things coming up. Yes. And uh, we now that we're in it, mm -hmm. we have to perfect a few things. Yes, we do. But that also means that it's time to roll a That's little bit right and we are excited to hit the road hopefully soon yes so. thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next week bye mom bye.